Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Uh, as for me, well, you know, I'm hanging in there. I have finished, I think this is actually about three sets of journals uh, that I'm uh, actually just listed in my Etsy shop. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of do a little flip through and give you guys an idea of what these guys are all about. Um, they're so first of all, all of these books I have been hoarding and <clears throat> just hoarding them. And, you know, I just wasn't really sure what direction I wanted to, to take with them. All of them are very, very old and, most of them were in pretty good condition also. And so that was part of the reason that I was sort of hanging on to them was that they were actually all in uh, pretty good shape. And so, you know, I considered, you know, just selling the books or just keeping them on my shelf or whatever, but they were all just so beautiful. I, uh, you know, I just said, okay, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> I needed to, I needed to make some journals. And so, I just kind of went around on the shelves and pulled books that I liked. And regardless of what the covers were, I said, okay, I'm just going to do some more writing journals because the last time I did those, um, there was a number of you that, you know, were disappointed that you missed out on those. And so basically I, <laughs> so what I've done is I basically pulled my favorite books from my stash that, didn't really have a direction and decided to make them all into journals. And, um, so yeah, so that's what I did. Um, these poetry books, um, <laughs> so I have five of these and these are just, I don't know. I can't even, I can't even explain how I feel about these. They're adorable. These books were just, amazing and they're so soft and so loved and um you know just really been around the block like you know this one's got a little ding right here at the top and then at some point these were library books but um at some point someone had tried to repair the corners on these or on this one and just added some of this blue book tape, you know, so I just, you know, obviously I had to leave that on there and I did clean them up just a little bit, but as I was doing that, a lot of the color was coming off. And so I just, you know, I just, just gave them a real quick once over and stopped myself. So, you know, they're kind of grungy. They're, um, you know, this one, well, I'll show them all to you. So you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but I had a number of these, you know, these are all different. Obviously, a couple of them were like in a series, you know, like these two. They're different books, but they were obviously, you know, um, a series. And then I think I just had one of these. And anyways, um, and then the Shakespeare books. And so, <laughs> okay, let me try to get myself together here. And I'm going to just kind of put these together into the groups or the sets that I think makes sense. And there's a couple of oddballs in here. I don't really go with anything else. So I just kind of lumped them in with the, the readers and the poetry books, but okay. So basically there's five of these guys. And when I say these guys, I mean these, these covers that are just really pretty floral, um, embossed covers, you know, I mean, come on, they are just gorgeous, you know, and I don't even remember where they came from, to be honest, they, you know, different, different places. But, um, anyway, all of these are 1880s or so, you know, they're definitely antique books. Um, but the spines were all in relatively good shape and, you know, so I, where I could, I think I only had one out of this whole, you know, adventure that I had to actually cover up the, the spine. So, and then, <clears throat> so they're all bound with a wax 
cotton and um, I like to use that because it's really strong and it's really easy to tie it and it doesn't really stretch much and um, also it's thin enough that you can still see the embossing and the design that's on the spines okay I didn't want to do hidden spines on these because I was trying to maintain the integrity of the inside of the book also and so this just works out plus I really like the way it looks I love to see the stitching on the outside of the book so that's just kind of my preference uh, one of these I did as a I think I did one of them as a three hole pamphlet stitch yeah this one right here uh, this one is the only one that I did of the smaller, this, this little set, uh, with the three hole stitch. And then I just, you know, I decided, you know, two holes is, is plenty. And, uh, so that's what I did just to kind of save some time. So each of these has five signatures. They are intended as a writing journal. Um, I did do a little bit of embellishing in them. Not a, not a ton, mostly just you know i added some tags and in, in some but honestly these ones i didn't do any tag any um not i don't mean tags i meant labels um i did do some tabs on these and <clears throat> so basically all of these journals that i'm going to talk about they all have the, the, some fabric tabs so these are all just really really old quilt top that I've taken apart and I'm making like scrappy trims and stuff with them. And, you know, I want to make some clusters and some fabric clusters and things like that. So I just sort of, um, you know, ripped off pieces of, <laughs> of this quilt top and folded it and just stitched it onto the, um, the first page of each signature. And, um, so that's, that's all I did for tabs. There are, there is one that has, uh, paper tabs and it's this one and I'll show this to you in a second. Um, so basically what I've done is I've just gone through my stash of paper and pulled out anything that, you know, is like, um, blank or, um, for writing, you know, and there's no book pages in these. These are all vintage papers for the most part. Some of them are not vintage paper, like this brown, like the craft paper is not. Um, but this is vintage grid paper. Um, this is onion skin. I have a ton of this, this ledger. Um, this is like a, I can't remember what they call that. It's like an engineering paper or something. Um, I guess that's what all grid paper is, but I don't know. It has kind of a weird name, so anyways um because see it's like two different grids it's like darker on one side than it is on the other side so um and then this is just like old uh like filler paper for like a small binder like an organizer type of book this is the amazing grungy grid that tracy fox created um, because I bugged the crap out of her about it <laughs> and, uh, no, she was happy to do it. I just really wanted to be able to print a grid on whatever I wanted. And so she was doing a kit anyways. And, um, you know, so she, this is actually in, uh, one of her kits in her shop and I'll try to remember to add a link in the description to the actual kit that this paper comes in. Um, I accidentally, I was trying to print this on the front and the back and I accidentally printed it twice on the same side. So some of them got really funky, but instead of, you know, giving up, I just said, oh, well, I'll just use it like that. Anyways, this paper is, it's actually like a packing paper. It comes in a, like a 20 by 30 sheet and I bought it on Amazon, but it's really, really cool craft paper it's real thin and it tears really nicely so you know it's it's difficult to find it's like brown paper it's like a brown paper bag weight but a little bit thinner than that and it's even a little bit transparent anyways I'm just nuts about paper so sorry I just go off on my little tangents 
Um, anyways, this is some more um, just lined vintage paper. And when I say vintage, that means more than 20 years old. Okay. So it's not all like antique or whatever, but it is, it is all definitely vintage. Um, and then these paper bags, I actually just get these at Target. These are their waxed. Uh, they're actually really not waxed much at all, but these are just their paper sandwich bags. And then uh, this is some ledger. And then this is, oh my gosh, this paper is, um, I bought this on eBay from a seller who purchased, it must have been like a storage unit full of like office supplies and stuff from an old like office supply store that went out of business. And, and so I got, he's got some really cool vintage, um, you know, like airmail envelopes and things like that. So, um, I, I kind of finagled with him and we worked out a good deal on shipping. And so I filled a box with different stuff from his, his, uh, his eBay store. So anyways, I, I love everything I got from him. And if I can, find it, I will try to remember to put him in the description also, because I think, uh, he's got some stuff that, you know, a lot of you guys would enjoy. Um, so this is just, you know, I, I, I didn't do much in the way of tags in the, in these, I did add some ephemera. These are just some little like game cards and stuff. And then I still had some scraps from the record albums, the sleeves from those record albums. And this is just the coolest craft paper. I just, I freaking love it. <laughs> Anyways, I used up just about everything I had from those. And then some more just like yellow, it's like a ledger, but how oh, does that stay on there? It says Lockheed. Yeah, Lockheed Corporation. Um, so it's kind of almost like a letterhead ledger. Um, this is from an old ledger, like a, you know, accounting book. Um, and I left a lot of the tabs that came in the, in the ledger. I left those intact. This is a different, um, yellow grid. This is from a ledger that is from 1900. It was a general store. And the ledger that I bought was about half empty. So, or, you know, half blank. So that was nice. And then, um, in the pockets, you know, I just, I just sit here when I'm doing this and I just sit here, I surround myself with all my stuff that I want to add to journals. And I just have like piles and boxes and little stacks and all kinds of stuff. And so, you know, each journal is going to have a, a little bit different stuff in it, but you know, I just pull from those, those stacks and those boxes and those little bundles of, um, you know, papers and, and add stuff as I, you know, as I go. And, um, so they're not all going to be exactly the same, but, um, these are so cute. These little flashcards, these are, um, what do they call them? Flash words. And, um, I just got these, I bought them on eBay and I just love them because they're blank on one side. So, and then I like the font of the little word and I don't know, and they're kind of a heavy paper. They're super cute. I might add some of those to some packs, um, on mine and Carla's live sale that we're doing on the seventh. Um, okay. Sorry. That was my phone ringing. Anyway, so let me just kind of get through this onion skin. Oh my gosh. I just got through one signature. Holy moly. So then this is some ledger from that same ledger from 1900 that I just mentioned, but this is the, the part that had the accounting on it. There's another one of those little flashcards. This is my absolute favorite paper right here. <laughs> um, well, at least like today it is. This is onion skin and it's, look at, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just so yummy. Same size as that other one that I pointed out for like a little, um, uh, like a little organizer or something like that. This is actually masking paper. This is what I usually wrap my journals in when I send them out. I, I package them up using this paper and it's so cool. Um, so if you've bought a journal from me, 
and you ever get that green paper, this is what it is. It's actually masking paper. So this is thesis paper. That's what this is called. Um, one of these journals has the front page to the pack that this came in. And um, <laughs> so it's really like the only kind of like weird junky paper that I used was that one page. So yeah. So anyways, just more of the same stuff. And then, um, you know, some paper bags and stuff like that. But, you know, I didn't do a ton of embellishing, like I said, but I did use some really, really nice papers. And, you know, if you got one of my writing journals last time, I mean, they're all writing journals, I guess. But when I say that, you know, obviously that means that there's not a, there's not going to be a lot of images and not a lot of, uh, book pages and things like that. Um, so there's a guest check, just anything that I stuck in here with the exception of this paper. Um, you know, I felt like you could write on it. You could use it as a note card or something like that. You know, um, this is actually, I bought a whole box of this paper from that same seller on eBay. Um, it's just, it's like a, it's really cool. It's red margins. Um, but it's like a cotton rag paper. It's uh well, it's 25% cotton, but it's not a, it's not an onion skin, but it's sort of similar texture. Um, and then I still have the city of Pullman paper. This is just super nice cottony, uh, stationary paper also with the letterhead, some more of that ledger. And then there's my avocado dyed envelopes. I love my avocado dyed envelopes. And then, you know, like I said, just added stuff that I felt like you could write on one side or the other. You know what I mean? And, uh, I take no responsibility for the content of these library cards. Okay. I don't read them all. So a lot of them came from a law library. So you may find some interesting subjects on those. So those are from a card catalog. Anyways, um, this is actually a really old ledger or really old grid paper that, um, I scanned and have copied. And the only reason I did that is because I only have like five sheets of it, but it was so cool. So I just had to, um, and I just don't think I'm going to have any troubles with copyright on it. But anyway, um, I had another one that was blue too. That was really cool. This is a new grid paper from like office Depot or something. Um, I guess this is what, Oh, this was actually a ledger. It's like a farm ledger livestock, you know, anyway, it's a little white paper bag. So there's tons of writing space in each one of these, as you can see. So, I mean, I just got through, you know, four signatures and, you know, I mean, there's just tons and tons. So I'm guesstimating about 250 pages, something like that. Okay. So I gave each of these a name and I used, uh, seam binding, vintage seam binding, I should say on each of these five journals. And <clears throat> they all have a name. This one is, and I just, you know, I just used words that I liked and, um, instead of giving them like human names. So this is become, and, um, I did a ball chain closure on some of the other ones on some of the other journals, but I did an actual chain as the, um, like the dangle for the charms on these, on all of these journals. I did an, uh, like a little, um, just like a little piece of chain um, with a big jump ring through an eyelet. And then I just, uh, added a number, just a random number. And then this one happens to have a little dragonfly and a little blingy, um, like bead charm. Okay. So there's the back and, um, yeah. So this is, what did I say? <laughs> this is become. Okay. And then, and I promise that I'm going to go a little bit quicker now. I just wanted to actually flip through one of these. So then this one is, uh, so, so see this book is a little bit thicker than that one, than this one. 
but it still has the same number of pages and you know i just spread the signatures out a little bit further is all so you can see that like on the spine of this one it wasn't perfect but rather than you know trying to repair that 100 percent, i just i don't know i just like to maintain the integrity of the cover the way i get it if i can you know like if it's not going to just completely fall apart then you know i really do try to preserve that so that you can see the wear and you can see the love and the history that this book has experienced you know so um this one is inspired and um so she's got you know the seam binding again and um i didn't use any lace in these i really only used this quilt top and mainly because it's got you know it's kind of a similar era as a lot of these books but it's got lots of green um feed sack and grain sack and uh well maybe not grain sack but flour sack and um some of my rusted paper clips so oh and i left i left the um the string in the center if you want to add you know like um little hearts or stars or paper stuff or maybe some buttons or something like that i usually leave those long so that you know in case you want to do that then then that's there if you don't like it just trim them off you know okay so that is inspired and tie her back up and this and it's kind of a it's a really neat color it's like a mustard sort of yellow color and then this seam binding is actually brown it's like a chocolate brown um so this one is the same basically as the first one um the charms are a little bit different this is balance and um so she's got the number six and then a little um eiffel tower and then another little blingy bead and kind of like a peach color well more of a pink actually like a dusty rose pink seam binding and then um yeah there's the back okay and then this one is glimmer oh i guess i didn't show you the charms on this one did i so this one has number two and then it's got this funny little camel I thought it was a little bit like boho ish sort of so anyways so it's got a little camel and there's a little bling uh, so this one is glimmer and it's just oh, i just love these books they're so pretty this one's got a little bit of like water damage or something on the back but you know what it's nothing serious the corners on most of these are going to be a little bit dinged up and a little bit soft maybe but I just didn't want to ruin the integrity of the cover by adding book corners because you know what? Sometimes they just don't look right anyways. Like they just, I don't know, they look clunky and out of place and weird. So um, if it was me using this journal on a daily basis, this would not bother me at all. So um, anyway, so this one's got a little, um, this is actually a key and then kind of this interesting little little blingy bead charm and then it has the number one so if you would like a different number if you purchase one of these and you would like a different number i have a ton of these numbers like this so if you would like a different number just let me know and um i think i can accommodate that it, up to i'll say two digits Okay, so if you want like 21 or something, I can do that for you. Just put it in the comment on the order when you place the order. And I will go ahead and add those um, to, your, to your charm. Okay, so this is Glimmer. And again, vintage uh, seam binding. This one is amazing. This is, uh, the book is titled Familiar Quotations. And I don't know if this is going to come through, but I sure hope it does because it's so, so pretty. Look at the butterfly and just, just the details. It's just, I mean, um, even on the back, it's got this embossing around the border of the cover. Can you see that? A little bit. So 
So again, five signatures. I did a green seam binding on this just because it was kind of a floral sort of feeling. And I don't know. I just thought it looked kind of cool. So this is Emerge. And right now it has the number eight and a little red blingy kind of crystal charm. And then another key. This one also has a key. Okay. So that's those five. All right. And those ones are all kind of, I thought, you know, similar. Um, well, let me show you the Shakespeare ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. These guys are, <laughs> these guys are amazing. I love these covers. So I think originally I had nine of these and I sold some of the books in a live sale, you know, last year, I think. And, um, I, hung, I hung on to these because I just, these were the, you know, I think these were in the best condition of the series that I had. So it was, there wasn't a ton to salvage out of the inside of the book that I wanted. Okay. There were some really pretty images of women and stuff. And I think I did save those, but I didn't include any of those in these journals. These are also writing journals. These are constructed pretty much with the same papers as the, the ones I just showed you just, you know, obviously larger. Um, but these covers are rare. These are so, so, so pretty. And, um, anyway, so these, I did do a three hole pamphlet stitch. You're going to see some wear on the covers, you know, on the, on the edges around the corners and stuff like that. Like, you know, but honestly, these things have been around for over a hundred years. I'm pretty sure that, you know, they're going to stand the test of time anyway. Um, so these, I actually lined the front and back cover with some, just some marbled paper. And, um, this is the only one that has the red on the inside. The rest of them have like a green and it kind of has like a gold, uh, paint in it. So I thought that was kind of neat and I like how it picked that up. It picked up the gold from the front. See, so there's a pocket on the front and back that's made out of the paper from the record albums, the sleeves. And then, you know, just basically, like I said, the same papers and, you know, like this is not vintage paper, but it's, um, you know, nice heavy writing paper. And then this is one that I printed. So this is not vintage, but this is vintage. This is vintage. This is that paper that I printed again. But, um, you know, I would say, I think I said 90% of the paper is vintage paper. I would, I'll take that down to maybe 80%. But, um, yeah, so, so much of this is, is, is just old vintage office paper or, ledger or something like that. Okay. So divider tabbed dividers and I'm, Oh my gosh, I love these paper clips. You guys, I got these. So I've seen these on Amazon, but they were smaller, like a lot smaller. And, um, anyways, I saw the bigger ones and I just had to get them. So I think I got three different, no, four different ones. <laughs> Anyways, I love those paper clips. They look cool when you put two together. It makes like a heart. Anyway, so yeah, like I said, basically the same stuff. Just, you know, just a little bit bigger. Some Rolodex. Oh, I used all of the end papers from those Odell's shop guide journals that I just did. The red ones. Um, I tore out all of the like extra pages that were in those that were blank pages. And I also tore out the page that was just the, um, the library, you know, paper. And so I just, you know what, I just folded them up and stuck them in here. They're kind of junky and kind of funky. This one looks like it had some coffee spilled on it or something, but, um, I don't know. I appreciated that. So I just, you know, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so just more of the same. 
But um, so this one, this is actually some fabric I got in some Happy Mail, but I believe it is Feed Sack. And, you know, oh, these are, these are some order forms from a lumber yard. These are, these are vintage order forms. Yeah. Potlatch yards. This is a, like a, a lumber yard. Yeah. So it was like a, you know, I got a couple books of them and they're nice because I can fold them and they don't, they're not brittle. Like they don't break. And then some oversized envelopes in these. I added some printed images and stuff, just some you know, some botanical type of images and stuff in these. And, you know, I did add some, this is just stuff that I had from other journals and, um, you know, I just thought it was really pretty. So I included it. I use, I use a steampunk kind of mm, tag, I guess, in the listing. Um, just because I felt like, you know, with the charms and stuff on these, they are a little bit steampunky, but not extremely so, but maybe just a tiny bit. I don't know what this was, but it was really cool with the, with the ruler. Um, yeah, so tall, these are 10 inches. Yeah. Well, just shy of 10 inches. And then I think they're, yeah, six, about six and a quarter wide. Okay. And then again, like I said, five signatures roughly 250 pages. So just tons and tons of writing paper and, um, and it's all my favorite papers. So, um, okay. So the charms on this one are kind of fun. Uh, so this one is expression. And so I actually put a spoon ring on this one. So it's just this really pretty little, um, little spoon ring. So I don't know what size it is. If you want to take it off and try it on your finger, it's, a little spoon ring and then the number three and then this little I stamped the word wonder on here and then a little blingy bead charm and then this sort of steampunkish sort of little gear charm with some tassels and then I use that really big ball chain that I love that I get at Ace Hardware <laughs> Okay. And then it's attached with a Tim Holtz little, um, book ring. So you could take this off real easy if you wanted to. And then I just did a ball chain closure. Okay. So that is expression. And then this lovely lady is brilliant. And let me see, let me pull these over. Maybe I should zoom in. I don't know. I hope this is working out okay for you guys. So <laughs> this is a charm that I got. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby, but it's like a little box. And I just thought it was super cute with these little gears and stuff on the front. And then um, I picked up these beads at Joann's the other day. And so I made these into some little dangle charms. It's a butterfly. And then I added another little metal like filigree butterfly, a Tim Holtz number 21. And then if you want me to add a number on this one, I can do that too. Like from those numbers, those bigger ones, just, just put it in the, when you order the journal, just put it in there. There's a place where you can message me and then another little bead. Okay. So that's brilliant. And it's pretty much the same inside, you know. It's a different fabric. This has kind of got a rose fabric um, for the tabs. And then it's the green marbled paper on the inside. Okay. So, yeah. So it's really um, very, very similar. Okay. And this one is glorious. Okay. So this one's got, you know, basically it's the green on the inside. It's the green. Oh no, it's not. Whoops. I misspoke. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys. Let me silence my phone. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Okay. Um, somebody is very 
persistent. Anyway, this is just some handmade um, paper that I don't even remember where I got. I think I bought it at the art supply store, to be honest. I've had it for a really long time. It's kind of like an olive green with gold. So this one has different paper. Sorry. And then the fabric tabs are from the backing of a really old quilt that I took apart. I think I got it from Carla and um, I saved the fabric from the back and just, you know, made it, made them into little tabs, just kind of folded it up and stitched it on. So, oh my gosh, I still have so many journals to go through. Anyways, um, so this one's got a little metal butterfly. I think this is a Tim Holtz butterfly. It's got a number five and then another one of those butterfly charms that I made a little square kind of crystal charm bead. And then this one has, um, it's a little stopwatch. Yeah. It's a little watch. Okay. And, um, it is, I think it needs to be wound, but it's new. It has a little owl on it. Can you guys see that? It's a little owl. Anyways, I thought it was really cute. And I've been hoarding that too. So I decided I'm getting rid of stuff that I've been hoarding. And then this one is Flow. Because um, Flow is actually... Um, it's a book. Anyways, <laughs> it has to do with uh, like positive thinking and stuff. So this one, how does this one work? I can't remember. So this one opens up to this little charm. Yeah. So you could put something inside this little box. Okay. And it will snap shut. There we go. So I don't know if you guys can see that. See, it's just like a little, I don't know. It almost looks like one of those helmets that they used to wear underwater, like ages and ages ago. And then there's a little key, a number eight, another little blingy bead charm. And then I added one of my little paperclip bead charms. Um, and it's on a clasp. So you could, you know, put this on something else if you wanted to see it's, it's on a little clasp. So, okay. So this one is flow and this one I hope has, yeah, it has the green marbled paper on the inside. This one, I did add one of my collaged pockets on the inside and I can't remember what the reason was, but I don't remember. There was some particular reason that this one needed a bigger pocket. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that is the last of the Shakespeare books. And these all have this like sort of embossing on the back and um they're all in about the same type of condition this one has a little bit of fading i think on the to the gold but okay so these are going to be free shipping in the u.s also you guys just just so you know all of these journals okay so let me grab let me just grab the rest of them that i haven't shown you There's 19 altogether. One of them has already sold, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. So, okay. So there's five of these poetry books. Okay. And then that's one of the oddballs poetry. And then there's three readers. Okay. So <clears throat> there's three yellow ones and then two kind of turquoise green ones. So as you can see, <laughs> a little bit grungy, right? But um, I actually got a lot of the grunge off of the back of this one, but I didn't want to mess with the front very long because I was removing ink and I just didn't want to mess it up. So, you know, it's got the, the little charms on the front and one of those little bingo charms, a number and then a key. Okay. And then the ball chain closure. And 
you know, these were also from a library. So if they had a library pocket in them, I left that in. And then I did add some labels in the poetry books and the readers. And then these other two oddballs. So all of these got some labels. The rest of them, um, those like flowery ones and the Shakespeare ones, I didn't want to add labels in those. I just felt like they were kind of out of place in those for some reason. So I didn't think that Denison had started making labels when those came out. So that's why. <laughs> um, some flashcards and some um, guest checks. And then Tracy made this adorable little due date um, paper, you know, like you find in a, in a library book. <laughs> I begged her. She made it for me. Actually, I didn't have to beg, but I asked super nice. Um, yeah, so the same types of papers, the same, like, you know, feed sack and, um, pieces from that old quilt and yeah, so about 250 pages again, and there is some new ephemera in these, these little repair tags and things like that. But so this one is enjoy. Okay. And this one is the one that is actually sold. Um, but this one is called Daybreak. And thank you to my lovely friend that wants that book. And then this one is Intention. And it has the number one and a little key. So this one is the one that I showed you guys first. So it's got that tape on it. It's the only one that has that. And I just left it because I thought, you know what? It's awesome. I love that tape. <laughs> I wish they all had that tape on them. Um, so this one is Discover. And there's the little charms. And I love the cover on this one. I love the bird and the little ferns and stuff so cool and they're so soft you guys like oh and that's the other thing i need to tell you um i added a little extender on the ball chain okay so if you take out all the stuff that i added in after i had bound the journal if you take all that stuff out this chain will be too long and your book won't stay closed so <clears throat> if that happens and you need it to stay closed just take out that extra piece. Okay. It's about an extra inch. And then you could just loop it around itself and hook it onto this little, um, you know, that little jump ring or something, you know, so you don't lose it. And, um, and it still has a little bit more room to grow. Okay. If you need to extend this more, just get another piece of ball chain and replace this one with a longer, with a longer piece, you know, and then this one is Awaken. Okay. This is the other turquoise one. So the ones that are left in the shop are the three yellow ones and one of the turquoise ones. And this one's got the, like the oxen and the wagon and stuff. Okay. And there's the back. It's got some ink that spilled right there, but you know, character, right? And then three of these are some old uh, readers. So there's a fourth reader and these books were a little wider than the poetry ones or the, you know, the flowery ones, but I just, you know, I didn't want to cut pages to a different size because I was just cutting for all of them at the same time. So these just have a little bit extra room right here at the, at the edge of the book, which, you know, I don't think would bother many people. You could add um, maybe like some stuffed envelopes or something like that into these if you wanted to. And, you know, anyways, you'd have a little bit of extra room on the edge. So <clears throat> there's the, uh, um, the first of the readers and these are all, these were in really good shape. I mean, I say really good shape because, you know, they were still intact and the spines weren't falling off and that kind of stuff. So and again, I left the corners kind of natural. So this is Compose. And then this one, this is the only one that I had to cover this up. It was just, it was cracked and it was, you know, just not, not going to make it without some help. 
So I used a piece of uh, flower sack on there and you can see the printing from the, from the sack on there on the front or on the outside and on the inside. Um, <clears throat> so this is a seventh reader. So you can see the flower sack there on the inside, or it might've been a sugar sack. Actually, I think it was sugar. Um, yeah, so this one is choice. Okay, that's that's choice. And you can see lots of pictures on my Etsy shop for each journal. There's 10 pictures for each journal, except for I think two of the Shakespeare ones. I only took nine pictures for some reason, so I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. Anyways, this one's curious. And um, this is the fifth reader. The cover's faded a little bit on this one, but you know, it's not, it's not super bad. Like if you compare it to this one, see, it's a little bit lighter. It just has a little bit more like surface wear. So, okay. So that's curious. And then the last two are these sort of oddball books. So this one is the businessman's English. And really <laughs> the only reason that this made it into this series is because it was the right size and it was blue. And I thought that was pretty cool. So this one is called a firm and, um, it's just a lovely kind of Navy blue cover. Um, and you know what, you guys just remember, and I, I started adding this to my listings. These are soft spines. Okay. Like these are not super hard, um, bulletproof spines, you know, they're, these are super old books and they do have some fragility. So, you know, you have to be kind of, I don't know, I'm not going to say they're fragile, but they are a little bit, you know what I mean? I mean, like they're, they're more than a hundred years old. So just, just keep that in mind. And, you know, I don't claim to have restored these to their original condition at all. So, you know, I just wanted to use them as a junk journal. So anyway, so this is the businessman's English and I just thought it was a really cool cover. Um, but I named it a firm in my shop. Okay. Same charms. It's got the same charms as these two. And this one, I just, I just, I don't know. I love this book. So what's interesting about it, it's a psychology textbook and it says psychology on the front and it's kind of like embossed. It's really kind of hard to see, but, um, it also has it on the back, which I thought was kind of interesting. I've never seen that before. So I don't know. And it's just like this, can you guys see the fabric kind of fraying and stuff around the edges? It's just super, super soft. It's just a nice brown, um, cover. The spine was in decent condition, you know? Um, I love the wear right around the top and bottom. And then this is the one that I did use the paper tabs. These are actually, um, Tracy sent these to me in some happy mail. And I'm going to show you something else she sent me, which I thought was amazing. But it was, it was, it was a special occasion for my birthday, but, um, but she got that whale tail paper punch, you know, I don't know if, if you guys saw that video where she was showing some happy mail and she got that, um, it's a Stampin' Up, like old Stampin' Up paper punch and it's a tab, but they call it, everybody calls it a whale tail, but I don't think that was the name that Stampin' Up gave it. But anyway, so she punched some out of craft paper for me and, uh, and sent those to me. So thank you, Tracy. I love them. I used them. See? So anyways, this one I thought could actually be sort of, uh, gender neutral. Okay. It doesn't really have much that is either feminine or masculine. It's just kind of down the middle. So, um, if there's anybody watching that is interested in a journal and doesn't want something girly, or if you have, you know, have a man or guy in your life that you'd like to surprise with a junk journal or something for Christmas or whatever, this one would be a good option. And, um, you know, you might be able to do one of these too. I'm not, I'm not sure with the fabric and stuff, but, um, oh, and then with each one of these journals, I still have, um, a bunch of these little guys that I made up, uh, when I did the Audell's books. So I'm going to include one of these little guys 
with any journal purchase until they're gone. And I've got about 30 left. Okay. So you're going to get one of these little guys too. It's just, you know, kind of like the same types of papers. And then I just did like a little, um, you know, just a little piece of ephemera in the pocket. There's, there's not a ton, but I did do one of my little handmade tags in each one. Okay. So yeah, so I will toss one of these in free shipping on all of this on all these journals. Let me show you what Tracy gave me for my birthday. <laughs> Look, I got a Starbucks cup from London. Isn't that the coolest thing you ever saw? They have a series. It's called the You Are Here series at Starbucks. And it was really funny because I bought one in Oregon when I was there this, this last weekend for my son's wedding. And this is the exact same shape. So I'm thinking, okay, that's what I'm doing from now on, wherever I travel, which isn't a lot of places, but, um, I'm getting a, a Starbucks cup to match. So anyway, so thank you, Tracy. I absolutely love my new mug and I'm probably either going to put it in its very own little cubby on the shelf, or I might just use it here on my desk for rubber bands or something like that. So nobody else will be allowed to touch it. Anyways, thank you very, very much. Um, and for all the other goodies too. So, okay guys. So these are all listed. Let me get this video up. I know it's like almost an hour probably. Yeah, almost. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Leave me a, leave me a comment if you care to do that. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, you can always email me too. And don't forget, Carl and I are doing a live sale on my channel on September 7th. And I think we said two o'clock, but I already have it scheduled. So if that's wrong, um, it's already scheduled in my, you know, if you subscribe, then you'll see what, what time it actually starts. It might be noon. I can't remember. Anyways. Okay guys. I love you. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye for now.